Come along, children. Now we're going to have a little music. What is up, guys? Welcome to First Cut. This is our spoiler review of Spider-Man No Way Home. So that means if you are watching this, you are acknowledging that you have seen the film and you want to enjoy what you enjoy throughout the film with a crew. And I got the crew for you because I am bringing in my crew of Sabrina Ramirez and Robert Butler III, director RB3 himself. What is up, guys? How are you guys feeling about this crazy, crazy box office weekend uh the craziest one we've seen in a long time uh how are you guys feeling right now honestly i'm it's to be expected you know like when the tickets did drop on what they called spider monday um everybody went crazy there was like long queues in amc something i've never even experienced before so it's just insane to see kind of what is happening um with the industry and with this movie as a whole um, how people like movie tickets are expensive. So people are probably like budgeting and not checking out certain movies, waiting for those to hit streaming. But for a movie like this, you just can't do that. You are going to get spoiled. There are so many secrets and surprises waiting for us within this film. And all three of us, we did a trailer reaction to yeah. the movie for like the second trailer that they dropped. All of us were underwhelmed. We yes. were just in a place where we we're kind of like skeptical about this entire film and I am eating my words. I can admit that I am wrong. I loved this movie so much. This was the best theater experience I have had in I don't even know how long. And that's where I'm going to start with it. <laughs> I, I, I definitely want to get your overall thoughts as well, RB3, because you're probably the most skeptical <laughs> of all, <laughs> considering you're not the biggest Tom Holland Spider-Man fan. Uh, I, I would probably rank myself as number one Tom Holland fan, as, as far as the movies go, at least. Uh, but I would definitely say you're at the bottom, RB3, at least for the three of us. Uh, so right away, my first question to you, RB3, before we get into spoiler thoughts, your overall thoughts on this movie, RB3. Listen, man, I just think, I think there's just a reality where I don't know if there's any reality where I might have like overwhelmingly like loved this movie. Now, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Thought it was good. Thought it was good. Thought it was the best of the Tom Holland series for sure. It was good. You know what I mean? So it was good. That's why I stand on it. That's cold. That's cold, man. That's cold. <laughs> I'm not vibing with that. I don't know if I can vibe with that. That's cold as hell. That's, that's a cool. positive review. That's positive. That's positive. How is that positive? I like that it. it's the best of the Tom Hollands, but I that's like good. it. You know Bro, what? That's, that's, you know you what? I'm happy poster. to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to hear it, RB3. Like, because I do get it. Andres, let, let's let start off. You are the number one Tom Holland stand I, out of the crew. I, I We got to go to you next. Like, come on. Give I, us I'm your the thoughts. Tom. I'm I like his. I like his movies. There's a balanced conversation that we're going to have to have eventually throughout this spoiler conversation about spider-man the actor playing the spider-man character the peter parker character and then the movies that they're in because i think that's two different things and i think we can agree that we can prefer different things about all of them but when it comes to the tom holland movies i am a massive fan and i was skeptical going in because i really did think this was going to be too much i thought it was going to be kind of ridiculous and over the top and bro it got me it got me. It really did. And I, and I can't lie. Like a lot of it is based on my connection to the character of Spider-Man. Like if I, I did not grow up with Spider-Man, if I didn't watch Spider-Man, the animated series, and then, I mean, literally every episode of Spider-Man, the animated series religiously, and then go into the new Spider-Man movies, opening night in theaters, Spider-Man 1, 2002 with the Raimi trilogy, watching those growing up, I I love this character. I've loved this character since I was a kid. I've read comics about this character. Literal, like, sat down and read the comics, as a lot of kids did. That makes this movie so much more special to me. Uh, and, and that's why, to me, I just really enjoyed the crap out of this movie. And, and I, I acknowledge the faults, and I will acknowledge the faults. But I definitely, overall, just enjoyed it so much. I agree with you. I agree with that sentiment completely. Um, to me, this was just two and a half hours of just complete joy. As somebody who loves every single Spider-Man movie, even the ones that people find to be the weakest, which would probably be the Andrew Garfield films, 
Andrew Garfield, this is a spoiler review, is still my favorite Spider-Man and Peter Parker. I don't know why. He's like in these movies that are definitely the weakest out of all the all the entries in the Spider-Man. Uh, I don't know, like the Spider-Man, Spider-Verse, whatever. But when it comes to performances, I think this film, Tom Holland has grown into this character like no other. I truly think like he is iconic to a generation the way that Toby was to others as well, like back in that day. So the fact that we get to see these three characters together, because I'm skipping right to it because I'm just way too excited. Um, I was in the theater just like, in tears because this has been hinted at you know some annoying people on twitter were kind of spoiling things like that here or there in this day and age it's impossible to keep a secret like this um but i feel like if they had just announced this film and released like the trailers that they had and they didn't include any of the old villains they didn't include any type of hint that we might see some other stuff um that we've seen in like previous spider-man films i feel like this would have hit even harder but today's day and age that's impossible to do with everyone trying to like get the first scoop on everything um but still it was such a pleasant joy to be able to see them all together on screen and to see these villains again as well and to see how we're revisiting these characters at a later time in their life and to see how they've kind of like grown and shaped around um, their lives as Spider-Man seeing Tom Holland's character, which these, this trilogy is basically like his entire entry as a whole. One of the things that we have kind of discussed is that Tom Holland, he never really got the spotlight on any of his films, the way that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire had, he always had other circumstances around him happening in the MCU. So now I feel like this jumping off point is going to be a story, but I feel like with this film, this is kickstarting another chapter into his Spider-Man, I don't know, endeavor. Yeah, part of me is like, there's two different conversations we can have about the enjoyment of this film because a lot of us got spoiled. I think RB3, you and I got spoiled on like the major portions of this movie. Uh, And I got to say, I'm still salty about that, too. I'm going to be salty about a lot of stuff, but I'm salty about that just because I do feel like there's a certain name on that spoiler picture uh, that stands out quite a bit. And I'm not blaming that person, but just the idea of spoiling the biggest moments of a movie right before you go see the movie is different to me than seeing a spoiler in a trailer. And you could be like, oh, I would have loved to know Electro is in this movie without the trailer or without you know, the trailer letting you know stuff to me isn't quite as much as a spoiler as like someone going out of their way to leak scenes and pictures of a mo- of a scene in a movie. That to me is just like so beyond like marketing giving too much away. Like that to me is just so yeah. dirty. And it, it, it doesn't take it away from me because I, I knew it was going to happen and it didn't necessarily take away the moment, but I did see it coming and it would have been so much better if I didn't see those leaks and I saw those leaks going out of my way to avoid him. Like yeah, on Twitter, I actively don't follow. <laughs> I told, that I many told people. you, I told you about him. I said, don't look on Twitter. Don't go over there. Like, and it was like, myself. it was like one of those tweets that, that is literally like a promoted tweet or something like that. Uh, and I was just like, you seriously promoting leaks of a film that hasn't come out yet, like three weeks before it comes out. I mean, it came, it was on, it was on YouTube on Thursday. Like it came out on YouTube, like a second. To me, it just kind of blows my mind because for me, it's like, I go out of my way, but I still got leaked. Anyway, that's a different conversation we can have guys. I definitely want to get into this film. Um, I would definitely say that this movie relies a lot on the past villains of Spider-Man to the, to the good and to the bad. I do feel like the first act of the movie was definitely the weakest for me. At least that's just my opinion. Like the first Mm -hmm. act as far as like he's doing his thing, he's just, you know, going around trying to find different villains. And it's just like, to me, I just felt like it was a little bit rushed trying to get to the eventual part of seeing the other Spider-Man. Um, but as far as the villains go, let's just go straight there. Uh, we have Doc Ock, we have Electro, uh, we have Jamie Foxx Elect- Electro, we have Alfred Molina, Doc Ock, uh, Norman Osborn is back, uh, Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. Uh, Kurt Connors, the lizard, uh, Sandman, Flint Marco, um, Thomas Hayden Church is playing him again as well. Who is the standout out of these villains? I'll start with you, RB3. Who stole the show for the villains? 
Well, I mean, I don't know who's. I don't know if I really know who stole the show, man. See, RB3 is, is like nobody stole the show. This movie was just tough. <laughs> this is tough for me because like. I've always had this criticism of the Tom Holland movies, and I can't help it. But I do generally but these feel aren't like, the Tom Holland villains, bro. But I do feel like, damn, they keep getting the best actors in the world and giving them like Disney Channel lines. And granted, this dialogue was like better than most of them had. And I like, I probably say the standout was Doc Ock. You know what I mean? Doc Ock was cool. He got the least like amount of cringy lines. Um, yeah, I like that line that Jimmy Fox had about the Black Spider Man. That was cool. They probably improv that. That didn't feel like anything scripted. Um, but I, I, everything else was just, you know, they were good. They were good. You know what I mean? They just played a little bit more like cartoony. Ver- I mean, Lizard and, and Sandman were just all CGI the entire movie. You can't say like they're standouts. Yeah, in I don't way. even know if they um, even like had the actual actors like come in yeah. or if they repurposed some footage for did. like Thomas Hayden Church. Like, I don't even know at this point, but nah. that didn't take away it from me. But sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no. Nah, so, I mean, those two just felt like, felt like whatever. And then, and then, and then, obviously the uh, the main dynamic was with the Green Goblin thing, which Wim Dafoe doing his thing. He always does his thing. He's always going to kill. I'm sure that's y'all stand out. But um, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I still, f- I don't know, man. I just feel like I watched those Raimi movies. And again, maybe I'm held, I'm held on to a little bit too much nostalgia, like, I'll admit that those are my childhood, you know, William Dafoe scared the crap out of me enough to where I like ran out of theater when I was like four years old, when I, when I saw the first or five years old, when I saw the first Spider-Man movie. So like connection is like lifelong there, you know, to me, it, he wasn't like scary. His actions were scary, but like him as a character, he didn't really do that dichotomy. Like the way that Oscar winning or Oscar nominated William Dafoe should be doing it. I don't know. That's just me. That's me. But it's okay to be wrong. This is the only time I'm ever going to say that you've ever been wrong. RV3, I get you on every single point that you've ever had. This is where I completely disagree with you. I thought he was incredible. And of course he is like the core of this. I feel like this cements him to me as one of the best comic book villains we've ever seen because what he brought in the Raimi trilogy and what we saw from him there, not in the trilogy, but like in the films, And then what we see here and him bringing this freaking menace, this loom over the entire film just completely got me. And kind of going back to what I said earlier, I feel like it's impossible to say that he's not the standout because we still get to see all the shades of the character. We see the fact that he is kind of like trapped behind, um, you know, what he has been dealing with for a while. And the biggest thing with all of these films are them Spider-Man being the bigger person. And we get to see that with Green Goblin because he, we have the Uncle Ben moment, but instead it's with Aunt May. It's with Marissa Tomei. And you want to hate him so badly. You just like want to be like Green Goblin is the worst. But at the same time, there is this level of like empathy and you understand why this is going down for him and how he is kind of unable to control it. And then when we finally do have um, the moment with like Tom and Andrew and, and Toby, and they're all talking about the different, like various shades of grief that they've dealt with as Spider-Man with their great power comes the responsibility to always be the bigger person. And sometimes that is very difficult. So I think in those moments and those interactions he had with Aunt May um, earlier in the film, and then later Willem Dafoe, if there's one thing he's going to do, it's eat up every single second of screen time. And he did it. He did it for me on this one. Bro, the thing that stood out to me was the fight scenes. I, there was two fight scenes, and I love the fight scenes in this movie. But he whooped his ass, bro. He literally, like, sent him through walls, sent him through glass, sent him through concrete floors, just like, do, 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 going down floors. I was like, damn, he kicked his ass bro i don't know that that to me was like the biggest standout uh if anything is because i i kind of feel like these movies uh especially in the past like the amazing spider-man film for example um the final battle is kind of like an all cg battle just like a bunch of electricity flying by and then obviously in spider-man 3 uh, a couple scenes with the sandman and even in in the past ones with far from home and stuff like that he's fighting imaginary drones and it's just an all cg thing fighting imaginary drones Whereas in this movie, there was two fight scenes where it's actual two stunt guys throwing hands, just straight up like throwing hands. And I was like, this is kind of refreshing because this is what made the first movie so cool. The first Spider-Man Raimi movie, because we do see Goblin versus Spider-Man literally just fist to cuff, just throwing hands. And I was just like, they kind of brought it back in this one. 
And I loved it because in the first fight scene, obviously he gets his ass beat. But obviously at the end, he he whoops Goblin and he almost kills him, uh, which to me was kind of a refreshing take as far as like the classic like villain on hero one on one uh, superhero fight. RB3, I see your face, bro. I mean, is there anything you liked no. about this movie? I liked it. I said I liked it. I said I liked it. I do like Name it. Name one like thing. I did like it. I like the fights. I like the Jamie Foxx line. Um, I do like that they made his character look like a normal guy. Like, that was good, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did feel like he slept walk a little bit through it, but that's cool. You know what I mean? I like that my favorite actors, Jamie Foxx, Alfred Molina, William Defoe, they're collecting checks. That's beautiful to see. Tom Holland, I mean, Tom Hardy um, even got in there and got his little piggy bank, too. So that was nice to see as well. Everything about that was, I like, I also like seeing, you know, obviously, Tobey Maguire and, and Andrew Garfield come back as well. We haven't talked about that yet, but I like the moment they came back. I like Andrew Garfield's performance a lot. I loved his performance. Oh. Um, I thought he was really, really great. Um, uh, okay, you know, if you guys so. want to jump there, look, we can jump there. We can skip Aunt May dying for crying out loud. Oh, I know that, that you were oh, that just going like to say that. that. You're shading Tobey Maguire right now. You're like, I what? like Andrew Garfield's performance. No, no was if, good. I, if if I if I'm being honest with y'all, because I guess we are skipping there. Andrew Garfield low key stole this damn movie, and I'm giving you credit, Sabrina. For some reason, I'm giving you credit just for being a fan, <laughs> just for being a fan. Uh, but I was like, yo, he's kind of stealing this movie from even Tom Holland. Like, obviously, Toby, Toby sure. to me was just like, I'm just happy to be here. But like, Andrew Garfield was like. Was is he happy Andrew, to be there? Yeah, bro, come on. Compared to was like he happy Andrew to be there. Okay, and Toby Maguire was happy to be there. I See, mean, that's he my hasn't. Problem. Like, Toby Maguire hasn't been in a live action movie. That's in what I'm years. saying. You can kind of like, tell. Like I though. think pulling this off to get them all in there, you can tell. But I, I think he actually did have a good time, like being able to like revisit this. Yeah. Um. Or at least it's, it seems like it. It seems like this was all just a lot of really wholesome moments between them. But going back to the Andrew Garfield, because you know I can't skip over that. Andrew Garfield was my favorite actor. I think every single time he graces any freaking screen with his presence he steals the damn show every time eyes of tammy faye tick tick boom mainstream just a few of these that came out this year that again he was relentlessly talked in every single interview he was asked about this freaking movie we had toby walking on the streets meeting fans going like yeah i'm in the movie and nobody talked about it but everyone was just grilling andrew in one of his like craziest years of roles so I'm just happy that he's finally released from being asked about this in every single interview. But um, the thing that just excited me most is that he was able to kind of have this really beautiful send off. We were able to have nods at so many moments in his films because he is like the forgotten Spider-Man. So the fact that when I was in the theater, I was literally crying because everybody in the crowd was like laughing and cheering the most at his parts. It's like the crowd, we all knew that he, and in those moments, he was stealing all of this. He was eating everything up, um, which just made me really happy, like as a beautiful send off for somebody who cares about the character so much. We yeah. saw his Comic-Con footage when he showed up forever ago, like, he put his heart into this thing, so I'm just happy that he was able to do it one more time. You could and tell, And if too. they do Amazing Spider-Man 3, cast me as uh, Mary Jane. There you go. Thanks. We have our <laughs> very own Mary Jane. Uh, no more Shailene Woodley. Shout out to Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. <laughs> I gotta uh, say, I, I, think, I think a part of the reason why I think I might be a little more lukewarm than y'all. Y'all had a great movie time experience. I had a good movie experience. The dude next to me, I, I'm sorry whoever dude this was, the most annoying cat I've ever seen in a movie theater in my entire life. Every single line, he was getting up off of his seat, cheering to the top of his lungs. Like, and 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 the moment was it was cool. It was cool at certain times, like when when the, they you know when all three of them came when the other two came through the portal when Ned had did that. Like, it was nice when that moment happened. It was nice when the Charlie Cox moment happened. But bro, it was like mad intri intricate lines of dialogue i was trying to pick up like the yeah. i thought the i thought the coolest moment to me was when andrew garfield has saved mary jane at the uh at the mm. end because it was like a dope, it was a callback to to the amazing spider-man too you know i'm not being able to save like emma stone obviously but then yeah. when that but then, bro i couldn't even hear the line that he said when he when he caught her because like the dude next to me was like ah, ah, ah. bro i couldn't i want to just mm. 
So yeah, oh, yeah. you're the theatrical I, experience. Kill it all. I don't. You can't. Shake the you can't take it out. Don't take it out on Andrew. Scorsese was right about the theme park rides. Um, in cases like that, like I love high energy. I love the love that everybody was giving. But like, yeah, if you're sitting next to somebody like that, let me hear what they're saying. Yeah, you out of all those moments. I I can't. Like, I love Cheers. I think Cheers are important. I really do. I feel like an audience should be engaged. I, I love when audiences cheer and are in, involved. I was actually kind of mad at my audience, to be honest. I had a freaking, woo. I don't know what is up with the theater, but I've been going to. Uh, but the th- <laughs> there's a lot of old people in my theater and they are like falling asleep to half the time. I was the only one cheering at, at certain moments. The only cheer that <laughs> got from my audience was um, Andrew Garfield showing up. Literally the only cheer I got in my theater <laughs> was people being like, it's Andrew. And I was just like, that's what you cheer for. Um, but at the later scenes in the movie, uh, my audience was quiet as hell. Like to me, the scene that made me cheer and I had to cheer. I was like, bro, I'm watching Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm watching three Spider-Man. Like literally it was the conversation where they're all like, okay, what are we doing? We're doing this all wrong. We got to focus. We got to get together. They're like, you're Spider-Man 1. You're Spider-Man. He's like, I'm Spider-Man 3. That's funny. And, yeah. and they all start running. And he's like, all right, ready? One, two, three, break. <laughs> and they all jump and they go, woo, woo. And they all woo at the same time, like at like consecu- <laughs> consecutive, like jumping off and they're all swinging. I thought that moment was like the most fun moment I've seen in theaters since like a long time, a long time. It, it, it was such a cool moment. And I was just like, looking around my audience like are we not watching the same thing y'all like come on like give me some energy uh but yeah your your experience is definitely not not what i had my i had quiet. right in between what both of you guys had and that's ideal just like yeah. that perfect midpoint of high energy but not too crazy um yeah. i i gotta say though i i really do feel going back to the andrew garfield of it all because i still feel like he kind of sold a show he had some of the best lines in the movie he was very endearing he brought a lot of energy uh, a lot of enthusiasm, which to me is kind of the most important thing, kind of like what you were saying, RB3, about sleepwalking. A lot of these people that they bring back, they just kind of sleepwalk. They're just kind of like not yeah. in it. Their heart's not in it. And you can kind of tell. Andrew was the opposite. <laughs> he was so gung-ho. He was just like all energy all the time. He's trying to and redeem I, himself for sure. Yeah, and I, I felt it. And I was like, yo, low-key, like, he's a dope-ass Spider-Man. Like, his movies are literally my least favorites. And I've said it many times. But he's a dope Spider-Man. Like, he brings a ton of energy, ton of charisma, ton of jokes. Uh, I, I loved him. I, lo- I thought he stole the show. Man. I've been saying. Yeah. I've been saying. Not to be this per- person. I hate the people that do this. But the people are hopping on this bag- bandwagon, like, hardcore. My entire Because his movies are good, though. Timeline. They're not. But I still, I've rewatched every single one of the movies. I don't think his are as bad and he is definitely the strongest part of it all him and Emma Stone together yeah. um, even separate no matter what it is they are very very strong it just was unfortunate that the movies weren't that great and that kind of like ruins the entire experience it soils the legacy of what like Andrew Garfield could have brought to the table yeah. but I think Watts and everybody behind this film all the writers were just very aware of what they had to do. Not too much like nostalgia and pandering. There were lines here and there that are like meta and cheesy and stuff like that. And I I liked most of them. I was in it for the ride with that. But the thing that I thought was the most important about all of this and the most impactful is the fact that they had they so much care with the characters. They knew exactly yeah. where they were going to land, what their own separate battles were, but then also what they could connect on. You know, and I think seeing that on screen was the most important and it just completely worked for me. It felt like this weird dream. Like I'm like going to wake up and I'm like, that wasn't a movie. Um, It's just crazy. Uh, Let's go to our favorite scene or our favorite moment in the movie. RB3, what, what's up, bro? Can I I just offer one more? You want to talk more crap? (laughs) Can I just offer one more critique? And I think, yes, yes. I think this is more, I think this is more than the fair. I mean, this is more than fair critique. I think everybody should have this critique. I don't know why anybody isn't saying this, but this is the exact same plot as Into the Spider-Verse, right? So, like, are we, in terms of the, all the Spider-Mans coming together, he has to learn, a, like, Spider Into the Spider-Verse walks yeah. so this movie can run. And, yeah, I mean, that's just it. Truly. Like, I, I, I don't, I think if I hadn't watched Spider-Verse, this movie wouldn't have, like, for one, this movie wouldn't have existed without Into the Spider-Verse to begin with, with I personally feel. And for two, um, 
I think if I hadn't watched Into the Spider-Verse, I probably would have thought this concept was like original and groundbreaking. Even though I know it's not, even though we've seen it in mad cartoons and mad I was going to say this was done, this was done in Spider-Man the Animated Series. I know I don't know if you guys have seen it, but this literally was done in Spider-Man the Animated Series. That's why I'm interrupting you, RB3, because I was like, I kind of want to correct you. I've literally yeah. seen this exact same plot. All the Spider-Man mm -hmm. come together in a universe. Universes are crashing together. Different villains are popping up. And Spider-Man has to save them all by leading a group of Spider-Man. I literally saw this when I was a kid. It was like yeah, 1996. But, I, I, based and, on the and, comics. And, I know. I got, I, I got it. I got it. And they, they did a good version of that. They did a great version with Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. And then they got to a good version again with this movie. That's what I feel like. I feel like that, yeah. I, don't, I don't think this is even... I mean... I don't know what you guys feel like. I know a lot of people are ranking this is the top Spider-Man movie or whatever. I don't. I can't even put it past Spider-Man two. If I'm being honest, for me personally, it's not. But, it's not over Spider-Man two. But I, but I will say like I don't even think the into this like into the Spider Verse has, to, has be to be over this movie in any ranking. That's honest because I think to me it's more original, it's more fresh, and like it's frankly something new. We've we've literally already seen these three Peter Parkers literally already. Like when into the Spider Verse had to offer was new stories, new characters and more original storytelling. To me, this storytelling wasn't that like, it was good. Again, it was good. It, and again, it definitely did the best yeah. version of this story that it could have done. And I think like, I think honestly, the into the, the multiverse, all these villains, all this stuff, it could have been crap. We've seen Sony screw the pooch on it before and they actually didn't this time. And that's like surprising. But I think the reason they didn't is because we had the formula already built in from Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, but I, I just feel like when people talk about, maybe just because I'm a really weird nerd, but when people talk about m multiversal stories that obviously the MCU has done in the past, a lot of people sleep on the fact that Spider-Man was one of the first people doing it all the way back in like the early 90s, back on the comics when they were doing the Spider-Verse type of stuff and they're doing the multiverse type of stuff as far as like different Peter Parkers and different universes. I've known this story since I was like, you know, five, six years old watching Spider-Man, the animated series. So I've seen the story be done before within the Spider-Man formula. And then I saw it again, obviously, when it comes to certain MCU stuff, but mainly when it comes to obviously MCU, meaning Loki, they did the multiversal stuff as well. But then when they did it again in, in Into the Spider-Verse, I was already familiar with it. So for me, it's like, I feel like it works so well doing this type of story that we've seen before within the spider-man constraints because sony literally has had the same creative team do, do this exact same story for the past like 30 years literally since i've been alive in the comics in tv shows and obviously in movies now whether it's animated movies or live action movies so i i think it works i i, I agree with you I, I felt i felt like that it was earned but i do agree with yeah. rb3 about like into the Spider-Verse is still my number one um, because I just love, I love that movie so much. It's probably my least rewatch, but that's only because it's probably, it's the most like one of the most recents that and far from home probably. And then obviously no way home as well. I am going to go see it again very soon. Um, I'm super excited for that. One thing I want to bring up before we kind of close this out, there's so much to talk about with this movie. And I know we we are going to do our Tom Holland um, Spider-Man meaning of the same way we did with Andrew and you guys did for the Raimi trilogy, but Doctor Strange. Um, that's like another thing because I just finally saw like a criticism about it where somebody's like, oh, they sidelined Doctor Strange for this movie. And I'm like, yeah, they kind of had to. Um, it's it makes sense that he's kind of like the catalyst that kicks everything off. Of course, they're going to have some kind of like close like I don't know, encounters and their communication and be able to talk to each other. It makes sense to have this, his like influence on this entire film. We've already been like teasing multiverse stuff in every single show or movie that Marvel has done in the last like year and a half. So the fact that we're getting multiverse of madness, he had to be sidelined for this movie. He started the catalyst and then, you know, he comes back in at the end. It makes sense to have his influence, but I'm so happy that he was not because that was a criticism that we were kind of talking about at the trailers. Yeah. We were just too nervous that they were going to be like working side by side. They were going to be against mm -hmm. each other. And mm -hmm. then that was going to take away from the overall story. But at the end of the day, even with all of these things around it, I still feel like this is the most solid Tom Holland Spider-Man movie that we have gotten because I feel like his, this story is like solely his. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I still feel like a lot of it, though, is reliant on the nostalgia we have of, you know, the previous Spider-Man. 
uh, you wouldn't necessarily know who these villains are. I don't think that's necessarily a detriment to the film, but it does enhance the experience significantly if you have seen the previous Spider-Man movies. But if you haven't, I'm curious to see people's reaction if they haven't seen any of those. Um, because to, to, to us, this movie does rely quite a bit on the idea that we do know who these Spider-Man characters are. Uh, but I do want to move on because I do want to say, what's our favorite moment or scene? We haven't even said it. I I think it's going to go back to, I think what you said earlier, um, just the three of them talking um, mm. towards the end of the film, just the influence that they have all had on each other throughout this moment, because, you know, being in this situation is probably extremely isolating, especially when we think about like, um, they talked about the Avengers and they're like, who's the Avengers? So like yeah. Toby and Andrew, their Spider-Men have been doing this like on their own yeah. um, for a while. So all of this like, loss and everything that they've experienced they have to deal with it by themselves whereas at least tom holland did have his like really close friends because even in um toby's and andrews their close friends kind of ended up like either dead or stabbing them in the back or something along those lines so i think having their interactions together with like the wisdom they've had um was really important to me and also the mj moment because gwen stacy's death i think like completely took me aback um, when I saw it in theaters. I was absolutely not expecting that. So the fact that we do get this redemption for Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker and his yeah. Spider-Man, um, that's really special to me. Yeah, I think those are my favorite. I'm I'm going to kind of like revisit it again and look at it through a lens of not being just like super, super excited late on a Thursday night. So it oh, could be different. Sure. Uh, RB3, do you have a favorite scene in this movie? Hmm... Yeah, I like the scene. I like the the Aunt May scene for sure when she goes out. Okay. Like I thought that was tough. You know, it was very it was yeah. the most human scene, most real scene. Tom Holland really uh put it there, and I like that it was it this subvert the expectations a little bit because I did think she was gonna be all right. Like I did think they were gonna go some Disney Channel goofy like ah oh, she made it through, and then they actually had like some guts and made a decision there. So I liked it. I liked that. It was heartbreaking. Like that entire moment, because I really thought she's like, Oh yeah, the wind is knocked out of me. And she yeah. has this mixture of like confusion and like, just not understanding what's happening at that moment. That was so heartbreaking. Also something I want to bring up really quickly while we're on that subject, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, I feel like has dealt with the hardest stuff. He's literally 17 in this movie, 18 years old, about to go to college or whatever. Um, He's dealt with the worst, I think, that any hero that we have seen has had to deal with in all of his movies. So much loss, half the universe getting wiped out, his aunt, the closest person, having to lose his friends, like lose the memory of it. Uh, Iron Man, just the whole team in general, everything that happened. Nobody has dealt with this type of loss. Like RB3 is truly. about to name one. Who is I don't know. No, nah, I don't. I, don't, I just think Toby did, did deal with a little bit more personally. Like, because I think, like, oh my with, God. Because, 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 because I say that because, I mean, he had Uncle, we don't even see Uncle Ben die in this movie, in these movies. But I do think we, like, the, half the universe, the Uncle ben. I was going to say, Aunt May half, died. Half the universe, he went with half the universe. He didn't notice. He, he had, like, five seconds of that. He no, imagine dying for five years. But it was or, like, being seconds. whipped away for five. It was like, yo, we seen Hawk. You saw Hawkeye, right? You saw Hawkeye, uh, yeah. uh, Andres. Like, you, it was yeah. like five seconds you're, you're snapped away. And then, um, and then, and then, uh, 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 in terms of, I mean, listen, in terms of Iron Man, like, he needed to lose that. I mean, come on, like, Iron Man, everybody got to lose their sugar he daddy had at some to. point. Everything makes sense, but it's still hard. He's 17. Yeah, that's true. But I will say, and going back to your Doctor Strange point, I'm glad Doctor Strange wasn't like the overarching presence. And I actually do think, I've been calling it Tom Holland Spider Boy the whole time. I do like that at the end of this movie, he did truly feel like a Spider Man mm -hmm. to me. Like, he he's living on his own. Like, of course, like, he was, you know, living on your own is not like an indicator if you're a man or not. But like, he's not like, he's not like seeking a mentor. The whole forgetting everybody thing is kind of like a nice like refresh and restart to like, okay, now he has to make new relationships. He has to actually be on his own, fully independent. Like, I, yeah. I, I dig that. Yeah. Um, I, I would say my favorite is, uh, my favorite scene is the scene with the Spider-Man talking to the Tom Holland Spider-Man. Uh, both on the rooftop, but mainly in the lab. I think the lab scene is just so cool because it kind of embodies what a lot of people forget about Spider-Man, kind of like the Batman thing 
where people always talk about how Batman is the best detective, but they never show it. And I always talk about how Spider-Man is like, you. we've talked about RB3, how Spider-Man is like the smartest dude ever. Like he's supposed to be like a super genius uh, and they never show it. Uh, they just kind of brush over it and kind of show the high school stuff. Uh, and I've always wanted to see a scene where they show off their genius and it's all three Spider-Man doing science bro stuff. And I, I was just like, this is, this is the best scene in the movie for sure. Better than any action scene, better than any fight scene to me is them trying to figure out a way and then just talking to each other and learning about each other and their stories. To me, that was the best scene. The best moment I already named, my favorite moment is when they're all uh, swinging and jumping off the rooftop because it's a moment of them coming together uh, right after they said they're gonna work as a team uh that after the avengers line that that tom had I, I thought that was a funny line too he's like i don't want to brag but i'm gonna brag uh that's literally what he said uh i thought that was fun any any uh fun moments you guys want to name before we uh jump off i like the jimmy fox line where he talks about yeah i thought you was black you know from queens yeah that was funny that was a really good moment and i know but the way he said it though the way he delivered it was perfect he's like yeah you're poor you're from queens you're a kid and the way he said yeah. it i was like that's that's a good line <laughs> Yeah. Right. I loved hearing um, the, the, the voice of the original Russian guy from the Raimi movies coming back as the as the dude at the end in the apartments when he's like, is your uh, rent this due? Like, you remember that? Did that he, was that I, same. I hadn't noticed that. Was at all. that? Yeah, yeah. It was the same. Yeah, it was the same voice. Same actor. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Way. I don't know wow. if it was. The, I don't know if it was. I mean, I don't know if it's the exact same act from being honest. I haven't Googled it. But that for sure was the same exact voice and the same exact line, like Got they it. said in one of those movies. Um, and of course, uh, gotta give shout outs to, uh, 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 um, gotta give shout outs to Dr. Octo Octavian um, when he like actually like got his ship fixed and he was like, um, oh yeah. I thought, I don't know, for some reason to me, that was like dope. Seeing him like on the good side was like kind of dope for me. The scene that got me emotionally was the scene where he, where he sees, Peter Parker, uh, Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker on on the scaffolding uh, at the ending of the movie. And the score plays uh, in the back. Did you catch that? I, it actually got me. I was like, oh, no. This is the only scene that got me emotional. I was like, that scene got me. It got me emotional. And I was like, oh, crap. I'm going to cry. Uh, just because it, 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 Spider-Man 2 means so much to me, man. It's like one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, so that scene really, really did it. Sabrina, do you have any? MVPs, I just think uh, John Watts, the writers, all the actors that came back and were down to do this. I know I know it's for the check at the end of the day. Like, how could you say yeah. no for that? But at the same time, we're able to have this experience because all of them signed on. So Alfred Molina, Willem Dafoe, people that are so celebrated and loved. Um, Andrew Garfield as well. Future Oscar winner because like Tick, Tick, Boom was fire. Um just seeing them all back was absolutely incredible. Zendaya as well. And um, the actor Jacob Batalon, who plays Ned, I thought they were great in all of their moments. I love that we were able to see this Spider-Man just be completely selfless because we've seen him make minor mistakes because he is so young and he's so naive. And he always like is trying to think of like what what's the best for everybody, but at the same time, like myself and this, he was fully able to just like release all of that and think like everybody's lives around me will be improved. So I will have to suffer for a little bit, but hopefully I'll be able to get back on my feet with great power comes great responsibility. Marissa Tomei's line delivery um, that she had, I know her line was a little bit different, but it was chef's kiss to me. The fact that he is the uncle Ben of this and we have the start to our spider man. Incredible. Uh, everyone is the MVP that is involved in this. <laughs> uh also, oh. I got to say, I, I laughed at a few things in this movie. I thought Ned was, was good. I thought Zendaya was really good as well uh, with their line deliveries. I thought they were fun. Uh, oh, but no, no. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. You, you go, you go. No, you no, go. you first. You first. I was going to say the, the moment when he walks back into the school and all three of the, the staff members oh, are the there. Oh, teachers. And, yeah. and, and, two, and then uh, JB Smoove and the, and the white dude are like, oh, welcome back, Spider-Man. So good to have you. And then you see uh, uh, Edible Birds. Cannibal Wars. Like, y'all, man, Spider Man, that dude, man. <laughs> He's like the real conspiracy theorist. <laughs> He's like the real life COVID denier, like the COVID yeah. vaccine deniers. Like, I'm like, yo, that is so funny. That was really good comedy right there. That's good. Uh, I still love my favorite bit that Hannibal Burris has ever done 
is the premiere of Spider-Man Homecoming. Then he sent a different guy to go walk the red carpet and pretend that it was Hannibal oh, Buress. Yeah. Did you guys see that? <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah. Marvel is literally interviewing him. And it's the same Marvel lady that interviews like Chris <laughs> Evans and everyone interviewing an actor playing Hannibal Buress. <laughs> it was amazing it was amazing i was like bro this guy is like mailing it in in a marvel movie uh that's incredible um i gotta say my favorite moment and it made me laugh out loud just because to me i can't i i can't tell if it's ever like on purpose when they do this kind of stuff but when when uh dr strange was sending everyone back and everyone was disappearing and Andrew Garfield was like literally seeing Toby disappear in front of him. He literally threw up the deuces right before yeah. he was disappearing, <laughs> like the meme of that kid disappearing. You've seen that meme, right? Yeah. Where he's like, yeah. yo, deuce, and he disappears. Yeah. I lost my I was like, is he literally doing the meme right now? Like that is hysterical. Literally deucing it up as he disappears. Uh another meme that they did was this I'm a, um, something of a scientist myself uh line. Yeah that Norman said while he mm. was in the dungeon. Uh, mm. I just think they do it on purpose. And I think the character is doing it on purpose as if mm. the character is aware of the meme, as if like Peter Parker in that universe is like, yo, I'm it's gonna do quite, this it meme. Felt, so it felt meta. Yeah, yeah, I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? It worked. Yeah, i like, bro, you're disappearing. Might as well just do it. Do the meme, bro. And he disappeared. Peace out. <laughs> uh, I thought that was hysterical. I don't know why it got me. It just sold me on like Andrew being Peter Parker and being like him acknowledging himself as like, I'm just going to troll and be funny. Um, I, I just thought he was a funny Peter Parker, and it definitely worked out for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have anything else in my notes unless you guys have anything else you want to say. Like, that doesn't feel like they had cue cards behind the camera whenever Toby had lines. Like, they're holding giant cue cards. Damn, bro, like. you throwing shit at your, at your favorite Spider-Man? That's bro. what I'm saying. It's hard, man, because he's the GOAT. It was really tough seeing I just think I just feel like he just, he's just, you know, man, he's had a different life, bro, you know? Yeah, like, so yeah, I mean, he had a, he has poker problems yeah. and you know chess. Yeah, he had that chess know, movie just, to happen. He's not oh really an actor. Oh my god! Anymore. Yeah, that's why it was it was you know he just did his best, and that's why they give him very little lines, and he still had you know. No, he's gonna be moments. in the next um, Damien Chazelle movie, oh, yeah, huh? Babylon, I believe. He was cast yeah. in that, so I mean, you know, the Tobey Maguire Renaissance it's coming. This wasn't the best entry yet, but did it mean a lot? It did. Yeah, and I still love the line that uh, Andrew had. He's like, you're going to go to battle dressed like a youth, pa youth pastor, bro? Is that really? <laughs> I thought that's that was pretty bad. funny, too. Because it's mm -hmm. true. I was like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, it worked out, man. I, I definitely feel like it worked out seeing them come back together. I, I definitely feel like that, to me, was the weight of the film coming into the movie was those two Spider-Man. They really did deliver. Because I thought the villains, I'm with you every three. I don't think they were necessarily the strongest, if I'm being real honest. Uh, but once the Spider-Man showed up, I was like, damn, it really does mean a lot to see these guys here and for them to kind of share their knowledge, their love, their whatever to this other version of Peter Parker meant a lot to me personally. So I was like, yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. And I'm um, super excited to talk about this with you guys when we do the Tom Holland meaning yeah. of and like revisiting yeah. all of that through understanding where this trilogy left off. It, it just means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, that is our spoiler review of Spider-Man No Way Home. Hopefully you guys appreciate our thoughts. Uh, show some love. RB3, say it, bro. Say it forgot, before you No, forget. no, I forgot one moment that I loved. The best celebrity okay. cameo in the entire movie was Danny Rojas from Tad Lasso at the end credit scene. That was oh, dope. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that. I was like, yo, Dan. everybody was like, Tom Hardy. I'm like, Danny Rojas. That was Football, is, was live. Yeah. Football yeah. is live. Football is live. Shout out to Charlie Cox, too. I know you mentioned it, RB3, but I, I haven't said anything. Uh, okay. Playing it's Daredevil. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him. Got that brick. Got it. Looking dope. He's a good lawyer. He's a good lawyer, man. <laughs> uh, shout out yeah. to his glasses, still wearing them. Um, yeah, either way, I had a lot of fun with this movie. Hopefully you guys did as well. RB3, where can everyone find you, man? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at DirectorRB3. Sabrina. 
You can follow me on Twitter at Sabrina X Monica, also on Twitter at Sabrina on Film. And I'm at Squad Leader Ace, guys. Make sure you guys follow us at First Cut TMO as well. Leave us a comment, let us know what you thought or what was your favorite moment of the movie down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. But either way, guys, for the First Cut crew, we're going to throw up the deuces like Mr. Andrew Garfield, Spider Man himself, and we're going to peace out. So peace. I want